I think we all have games we play that for some reason or another stick with us. The experience of that game is like nothing you'd experienced before. It's almost impossible to know what these games will be, what experience will resonate with you the most, and sometimes these games may be something you'd never thought you'd be into. For me, that game is the original Dark Souls. Dark Souls was the game that really taught me the value of a fair challenge by kicking my ass over and over and over again. Which is why I think I went from having a few hairs on my chest to a full chest bush. I was only 14. Try being the first one in your year level with chest bush. But I loved it. Yes, I was terrible at Dark Souls. I got stuck on so many bosses, died easily over a thousand times, but it was the first game where I genuinely felt like I died because of my mistakes. So when you'd finally beat a boss who was giving you so much grief, it was a feeling like no other I'd experienced. The pride of knowing, I can do this. I can beat this game. My first playthrough of Dark Souls easily took over 50 hours to beat, but when I say I was emotional seeing the credits roll, I mean it. Just knowing, yeah, I did it. I was pushed and pushed and I came out victorious. I had beaten Dark Souls, but not only that, I wanted to do better. I wanted to push myself further. So I started doing challenge runs, going for achievements, trying to beat the game as fast as I possibly could. I couldn't stop myself from starting the game over and over again. I wanted to feel that feeling again. I wanted to feel like I would have to dig deep to beat the game. Unfortunately, it was never the same. So today, I'm here to talk briefly about my experiences with the series and how I was feeling going into Sekiro. Time codes will be in the description below because this is a long one. Oh, and there won't be any story or late game boss spoilers but I still will be talking bosses and general things in the game, so if you still want some surprises in Sekiro, you've been warned. So after I had my fill with Dark Souls, and when I say had my fill, I'd easily say I played over a thousand hours, and that's being conservative, it was, it was becoming a problem. I felt it was finally time to go back and play Demon Souls, which I loved and for a very long time debated with myself if I liked Dark or Demon Souls better. It was great going back to see the game that started this series off, but whilst it did have its challenges, it just wasn't the same feeling. I never really experienced that joy and pride of beating certain bosses and areas. Not saying it was a breeze to get through. But I never hit those walls. Never felt like I had to dig deep to pull out the win. Which, yes, made me realise I'm just going to have to be okay with not experiencing that pure rush of overcoming something that beat you down for so long. Then with the release of Dark Souls 2 is honestly when I had given up. Now look, Dark Souls 2 is not a horrible game, but it just is so far off what the series was at that point and after beating it, yeah, I didn't feel that adrenaline. And for a long time, I flat out just didn't like the game. I decided I was done. Maybe I'm just burnt out. So on the release of Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3, I still picked them both up day one, which I really need to stop doing if I don't have any intention on playing it day one. But I didn't actually play and beat either game until around 2017, maybe early 2018. Now again, whilst I love Bloodborne and really enjoyed Dark Souls 3 for all they did right, I wanted to experience a good, honest, fair ass kicking. I had glimpses with the Chalice Dungeons from Bloodborne and the Nameless King from Dark Souls 3. I died, obviously. But I was stuck in my ways, learn the attack pattern, block, parry, backstab, and for bosses, stick to that ass and smack away does wonders on a good majority of them. Needless to say, whilst I was excited for Sekiro, in the back of my mind, 
man, I was just so damn cocky. Okay, so when I say I was cocky with Sekiro, let me explain. I picked the game up, day one, but didn't actually have a chance to play it till the Monday due to working on other videos, which while you're here, check them out maybe. I honestly thought it would take me a couple of days to beat, I'd write up my review, edit it together, add some shit jokes and pump it out onto YouTube. Clearly, that didn't happen. Sekiro punishes you for playing it like a Souls game, which for me, as someone who had played all the games in the series and its Souls-like brethren, basically meant recalibrating my brain and reflexes. No more circling for backstabs in combat, no more stamina management, no more running up to jump, no more healing with the X button. This took far longer than I'd like to admit to get used to. Uh, I died a lot pressing X instead of up. No more hugging a boss's ass. In Sekiro, probably the biggest thing you need to understand is you're a shinobi, a ninja, and your enemies are formidable foes. It feels like you are actually fighting a trained, skilled opponent. They'll actively deflect attacks, punish you for being greedy, and if you don't take them seriously, you're done. There were so many aspects of Souls that I didn't know I used as a crutch until Sekiro. I was waiting for enemies to attack to punish them. I'd dodge into invincibility frames to get more hits in and escape unscathed. Circling for easy backstabbing opportunities, I got to upgrade skills like health and stamina as fast as I needed. Sekiro says no to these. You need to wait till you kill four mini bosses to up your posture and health. You need to defeat main area bosses to increase your attack damage. You need to identify when to dodge, jump or deflect. If you play Sekiro like any other Souls games, you're going to have a rough time. And that is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want to fall right back into my Soulsborne ways. I wanted to feel like, there's no way I can do this, this game is too hard. Because from that is where the joy comes from for me. The pride, the adrenaline, the sweaty hands, it all just gets your heart pumping. That feeling upon clearing a stage you might have struggled with, or a boss that seems like it might be your breaking point. Overcoming that challenge victorious. It's like no other feeling and is something I had given up on feeling after Dark Souls. I thought it was to remain a memory. But what makes Sekiro so different and what makes this game an experience worth having? Okay, now to get to the meat and potatoes. Yeah, Sekiro is a difficult game. And I feel like if you didn't know that going in, well that's on you. But it's one thing to have a difficult game. As I said in my Should Sekiro Have an Easy Mode video, difficulty options are so hard to get right. Using the example of Halo on Heroic feels the most balanced challenge to fairness wise. Whereas Legendary is doable, but you know, has a lot of just bullshit along with it. If your game is challenging, you need to have it be fair. And this is from software's bread and butter. Instead of blaming the game, you only have yourself to blame for failure. Now, this isn't the case in absolutely every situation in any of the Souls games, and even Sekiro. Like weird hitboxes, making it look like you're safe, but you get hit anyway. Obviously stuff like that, yeah, it's not so good. But in the grand scheme of it all, in Sekiro, I'd say failure is 95% your fault. Yeah, five times out of a hundred, shit happens that shouldn't have. Does it suck when it happens? Sure. But for the majority of your time here, you only have yourself to blame. This isn't saying Sekiro is just straight up challenging all the time. Here you have the ability to resurrect during combat to try and immediately learn from your mistakes. There are tutorial pop-ups upon getting a new item or a new enemy with certain combat style, etc. The game has a pause button. Again, a pause button. 
And the big one, the one inclusion that once you start getting in a groove makes levels quite easy to get through unscathed, the stealth mechanics and one shot death blows. Don't get me wrong when I say this system once you get going is easy to just fight bosses and stealth kill normal enemies. This isn't one a bad thing. There is a lot of mapping out enemy patterns, who can see you, who will get alerted the fastest, who will give you the most trouble if you are spotted. So when you clear out an area without anyone seeing you, I mean that just feels good. But also point to, if you don't respect the stealth, you'll more than likely get yourself in a position that if it doesn't kill you, puts you in a less than favourable position to take on a boss. Now as much as I love the stealth, feeling like a shinobi in 16th century Japan exploring and clearing out areas, the bosses are where I just can't get enough of this game. I think like many fans of this genre, the thing that always makes or breaks the experience for me are the boss fights. Luckily, the bosses in Sekiro are no joke. This is where personally, I was really pushed. I got the stealth down packed pretty early, but man, a lot of bosses absolutely kicked my ass. So much, I think I might still have a little taste in the back of my mouth. They destroyed me is what I'm trying to say. Which again, being the masochist I apparently am, I loved it. Not all bosses are overly difficult. I mean, the folding screen monkeys is more of a test of finding them than actually killing them. But the bosses that really got my adrenaline going, my heart racing, were the fights that seemed to be too much. The bosses that when you first find them, absolutely destroy you. The ones that the first couple of attempts seem like they don't really seem to have a weakness. Maybe they don't leave themselves open for attacks all that much. They seem to be too quick. They don't give you a minute to breathe. These fights are the ones that really make sure you've been learning as you've been playing. This is where you really need to be observant. Pick up on tells the enemy displays before certain attacks. Figure out if it's best to slowly chip away at a boss's health, or maybe their posture sucks. Some bosses you flat out cannot attack. The Ashina Elite, he does not give you a chance to attack, so it's time to get your deflecting game on point. The Guardian Ape is erratic, he barely gives you a chance to attack, but he's an animal, so use the Firecracker Shinobi tool and try and bait out attacks that will leave him exposed. On the Shinobi tools, there is just such a good amount of variety here, with a Flame Burst, Shuriken, Axe, Spear, Firecrackers, a, a animal whistle, there's a ton. So it's important to know what will work best on what boss and being sure to manage your ammo because, well, you may want these for certain situations. So running out of ammo and trying to use them is just, trust me, you don't, you don't want that. This is why you need to learn what attacks you can defend, attacks that you can't, and what attacks will leave your enemy open. Don't forget to sidestep, jump over attacks, and the most useful, especially for animal bosses, do not let go of that sprint button. You don't have any stamina, so just keep running and attacking when you can. Some bosses want you to use the environment to kill them, like the Armored Knight. So you have to pick your moment to get a death blow to kick them off the bridge. It's moments like these that force you to leave your preconceived game plan at the door. Face the boss, figure out their patterns, then plan your attack. Knowing you failed and failed and maybe failed again over and over to finally get back up and defeat these bosses, it just evokes all these great emotions, the pride, the joy, the fuck yes, I did it feelings. And this is what I've been missing from Souls for a long time. Something that took me completely by surprise in Sekiro is the game has set piece sort of moments. Yes, I'm talking about the giant snake. Now, I'm an Aussie, deadly snakes are out and about, but they are not really something I'm all too scared of. This snake, however, is flat out intimidating. 
he's aggressive, he'll basically one-shot you if he sees you, it really turns into stealth missions. Yes, missions. It'll be back after that vicious eye stab. Heck, this isn't even the only one. Because I killed it, then kept progressing through the level, and bam, another, another one. one. These sections really do help mix it up and stop the game from getting stale because seriously, I mean, just look at this. These snakes are no joke. And I love if you're observant enough, they are actually alluded to with giant snake skins on trees and the like. I also was surprised that whilst the story isn't anything out of this world, I really do think it suits here. It's simple enough, but also isn't just all explained through item lore. As much as I love Souls lore, I don't like reading. Look, a game can get as many positive reviews, ratings, recommendations as possible. That does not mean that game will be this way for absolutely everyone. It's just impossible. I get that not everyone plays games to be challenged, and that's cool. We all have our own reasons why we play the games that we do. But Sekiro does a lot to teach you how to be successful at it. It doesn't have these complex stat builds. You can die and still make progress. You can progress without even being seen. And if you do die at the bosses, the run back is usually quite quick, either having idols close by or with the use of grappling and running, you can get back to where you were, no worries. You only lose half your money and XP upon death if you don't get the unseen aid and skill points can't be lost. If you're struggling, my biggest tips would be stealth as often as possible. You can tell you've been deflected by this big spark and if you have, prepare for a counter attack from your enemy. This spidey sense symbol usually means an attack that should be dodged or avoided is coming, so do that. But lastly, if you feel like you're just getting worse, having a few too many silly deaths, just turn the game off. You may just be overthinking a situation. Take a break and come back to it. This is what helped me make giant leaps in progress as yes, I'd learnt the boss, but I was still stuck. Coming back to it later, I'd usually beat it first or second try. It's just your brain and emotions going into overdrive. Sekiro pushes you, but it also gives you the time to learn and to get better. I could go on and on gushing about the game, but whilst it isn't flawless, I mean personally, I had a few camera issues from time to time. I really recommend you play Sekiro. Test yourself. If it's not your cup of tea, I get it. But the game is fair. The game puts you through this adversity to help you get better. It's honestly hard for me to see a game beating this for my game of the year because Sekiro replaced Dark Souls for one of my favorite games of all time. Maybe I'll do a video on that down the track, but for now, this has been my thoughts on Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this isn't a classic Mare Hair Bear review, not as many jokes, but when a game is this good, man, it's hard to crack jokes. The game was just too good. But if you stuck around to the end, thank you. This was a good meaty video. You've done well. If you enjoyed though, don't forget to leave the video a like. Comment below your thoughts on Sekiro if you played it. And if not, well, what else are you playing instead, huh? Subscribe if you're new, I do videos on the regular, and if you want to keep up to date on what videos are coming out, what my thoughts are on games as I play them, or what games I'm picking up, don't forget to follow me at MareHairBear on both Twitter and Instagram. More videos are on the way, but for now, I hope you guys are having a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.